Welcome to the HyperMesh 2023 introduction videos. This video is about geometry and meshing operations. You will create and edit mid surfaces, create a shell mesh and rigid spiders. Import the step file for this exercise with the default options. In the component browser, Change the color of two components to improve visibility of the mesh that will be created. Save the current state as HyperMesh file. Before creating mid surfaces from each solid, have a look at the options menu. This offers numerous settings, like for organization of the mid surfaces into components or extraction controls. Keep the default settings, then select the three solids and confirm the mid surface extraction. Select the original components in the browser to turn them off, and with them the display of the solids. The mid surfaces are organized in new components per original components. Apply a change of the design on flange 02. Use the Move tool to rotate it by 90 degrees. The option Align to Part in the Micro dialog allows for easy orientation of the Move tool. Now inspect the geometry to see that the mid surfaces of each part are not connected. To connect them, use the cross extend tool with adjusted setting for the maximum extension distance. On one end, there are two things left to do to have the desired result. The red edge indicates free edges, which means surface edges are not connected, which would lead later to not connected elements in that detail. The stitch tool allows easy connection of unconnected edges. The second thing to fix is the sliver surface which remained after the extension action. This can be deleted quickly through the selector. Save your work as a hypermesh model with a new name. The geometry is prepared for meshing, so we move to general 2D mesh to create a shell mesh. Start by inspecting the options menu, which offers a lot of settings. We keep the defaults and can still change the desired mesh size in the micro dialog after selecting the surfaces and starting the meshing action. Then you enter the interactive meshing mode, where you can still change the mesh size either globally. or locally per surface edge. Other settings you can change interactively are the biasing per edge and the mesh style per surface. Like for example, you may want to change it from the default, mixed, which is good for oriented meshes, to quads, which looks more organic and usually contains less tree elements. Change the shading setting for the mesh to better visualize the mesh lines. Looking at the holes, you may want to include structured quad elements around them, called washers. You can cut washers around individual holes using the split lines tool with the option offset lines. Undo the washer split to see a different way to introduce these. To use a more automated way, use the rebuild tool, which is controlled by two files, the perm file and the criteria file. The perm file offers many optional settings to control how features should be represented in the mesh or also removed from the mesh, with the, the desired mesh size being the setting to mandatorily take care of. Load the perm file provided for this exercise to use prepared settings.
Similarly, load the prepared criteria file, where the element size has to match the one in the perm file. Rebuilding selected elements with these settings will generate the washers, and also improve the mesh pattern. Undo what you just did with Rebuild and the general 2D meshing, to see a different, highly efficient meshing approach, which directly makes use of the settings in Perm and Criteria file. This is the Batch Mesher, which you can use standalone to mesh numerous geometry files in parallel, but it can also be applied inside a hypermesh session to selected surfaces. You see that Perm and Criteria file are still selected as you did in the Rebuild tool. The meshing action can now not be controlled interactively like in general 2D mesh, but usually leads to improved mesh pattern and feature representation or removal, as defined by the settings in the perm and the criteria file. We recommend having a look at further information and tutorials about parts and subsystems, which offer a highly automated workflow to build a model from CAD and PDM data, which includes also the batch meshing functionality. Save your work as another hypermesh file. Last thing to add to the mesh is rigid spiders for load and constraints application. Instead of choosing the independent node, check the option to calculate its position automatically from the selected dependent nodes. For the selection of the dependent nodes, change the selection method to by egged with the option free loops only one layer. This allows to select all nodes of a whole by one click, including one layer around it. Note that the degrees of freedom treated by the rigid are per default set to 1 to 6. Now once the selection method was switched to by edge, you simply activate it consecutively by holding the Alt key, which is done here for the further rigids to be created. In addition, the middle mouse button is used to confirm the creation of the rigids, thus avoiding further mouse actions. Last action now is to check and adjust the organization of the mesh. Use the browser to see that the rigids are located in one of the existing components. Create a new component, name it or BE, and give it a color of your choice. Note that it is typed in bold letters, which indicates that it is the so-called current component. The rigids were originally saved in the component that was the current one at the moment of their creation. To store them in the component or BE, select them and organize them accordingly. Save the final result of your geometry and meshing actions as another hypermesh file. The next video in this series will continue with setting up properties and loading conditions, then solving the finite element model. Additionally, two breakout videos are available, one showing a more automated way to build your model, the other one showing details about manual editing of geometry. Manual editing of meshes is a breakout video of the next main video. Thanks for watching.